Here I've drawn a closed path that I've called C in the XY plane. It's a square with corners at 1, 1, 2, 1, 2, 2 and 1, 2. I've taken the orientation of the path to be the anti-clockwise direction. Because the path is closed, it encloses an area, the area of the square, which I've called S. That's S for surface. I'm going to evaluate a line integral around the path C. In fact, the following integral. It's the integral involving the dot product of a vector f with the small element of distance dr. I'll say what f is in a moment. Remember though that r is considered to be the position vector of points along the path, so that dr measures small traces of distance along the edges of the square. For my f I'll take the following vector. Notice that this problem is entirely two-dimensional. It's all in the x-y plane, so there are only x and y's, and i's and j's, and no k's or z's. As it happens, I've chosen this integral to be exactly the same as one that I've evaluated in another maths cast. In that other maths cast, I have done the tedious process of evaluating the integral along each side of the square. If you view that cast, you'll see that it takes quite a long time and a lot of effort. Here I'm going to show you how to do it much quicker using Green's theorem in the plane. That theorem tells us that for a closed path integral in a plane, in fact here in the xy plane, we can turn it from a contour integral around the path instead into a double integral over the region S. The exact structure is the following. Here, f2 is the second component of f, that's x squared, and f1 is the first component, that's y. Now your first problem, if you're like me, might be remembering the order of this expression, df2 by dx minus df1 by dy. I normally remember it by remembering that actually this is a special case of Stokes' theorem. If you remember Stokes' theorem, which at least I find a little easier, then this expression follows. Let me show you how. Here is Stokes' theorem. Notice that the left-hand side is the same, but Stokes' theorem is a three-dimensional theorem. It says that the integral around a path of f dot dr is actually the integral around the, over the surface enclosed by the path of the curl of f, dotted with, now, the normal vector to the surface. When the surface is just in the xy plane, that normal vector will be k. The point here is that I only have to remember the curl of f and not the order df2 by dx minus df1 by dy. My original problem is really two-dimensional, but if I pretend for a moment that the xy plane is sitting in three dimensions with normal k, then I can easily write down the curl of f using the determinant form for the cross product. This is a form that by now you probably remember easily. Notice that nothing here depends on the third dimension z, so instead of d by dz I've written 0, and instead of f3 I've written 0. Oh, those little symbols dx and dy just save me writing out d by dx and d by dy. So now I just evaluate the determinant, and I've got my expression, which will then be relevant for Green's theorem in the plane. You'll notice, of course, that it's a vector, but it's just in the k-direction. Since the n-hat is also in the k-direction, we end up with k dot k in our integral, which is zero, uh, 1. So replacing k dot k with 1, and ds now being only in the xy-plane with dx dy, we have our expression for Green's theorem in the plane without having to remember it. There it was back there. You see that agrees. OK, so now, once we've done that little bit of work and got the right integrand, then all we have to do is work out those derivatives. Now remember, our f was, what was it, y x squared, wasn't it? Let's just double check that. Right back at the beginning, yeah, y i plus x squared j. So, df2 by dx is 2x 
and df1 by dy is 1. So we get the integral and we have df2 by dx, that's 2x, minus df1 by dy, that's 1, dx dy, and what about the limits? Well, they're just the limits appropriate for the square. That's both x and y here running between 1 and 2. So 1 to 2 in both cases. We can now easily do the x integral, leaving the y one alone. So I'm doing this one here. And that's x squared minus x from 1 to 2 dy, which is the integral from 1 to 2 of 4 minus 2 minus 1 plus 1 dy, which is the integral from 1 to 2 of 2 dy which is 2y from 1 to 2, which is 4 minus 2, and the answer is 2. If you've watched the other maths cast, you would have seen me obtain that answer too, but by a rather longer process of integrating around the four sides of the square. I hope I've convinced you that use of Green's theorem in the plane, particularly if you can remember the formula quickly, really gives us the answer rather more efficiently than doing the full line integration.